Sweet, we're rolling. Welcome everybody to Vermont Scale Customs. Thought we would do maybe coffee and a little bit of chat here about some tiny trucks, a couple of the things that are going on with the channel, kind of keep you up to date on what's happening. Uh, sorry about not having a whole ton of uh, running videos available this week. I actually, for the first time in months, did not make it out to run a single truck last weekend, and I feel kind of bad about it. So hopefully I can change that uh, coming up this weekend. And I should really have no excuses. I've had nothing but time on my hands to be able to get out and play with trucks. So uh, other than just having a few things going on that just sort of ate up the weekend. And before I know it, I, I actually might have think like the weather kind of been a little bit of question, a little bit questionable as well. So I didn't make it out. But anyway, I should get back into the normal release schedule of videos, running videos here sometime soon. So cheers to that. But I wanted to do a video about tiny trucks. Um, I have, uh, in light of not going out and, and running trucks a lot this weekend, or week, excuse me, and uploading videos, um, have been spending some time working on uh, the 124 and actually the Mini Z scale stuff, which is like 128 if I'm not mistaken. So let me start with actually this one in the middle, which is a chassis that sort of, well, not sort of, it belonged to me. Uh, but a buddy of mine actually got into running 124 scale stuff, and so he bought a uh, an STX 24C10, um, which I've uploaded a bunch of videos for, and you probably have seen those as of recent. And so anyway, I convinced him uh, that I needed to build up this hot racing rock racer chassis of uh, out of all the stuff, the parts over. So basically, I swapped that over to what we've got here. So. Um, he picked up a set of wheels and tires and a set of shocks and of course I provided a set of aluminum links for him and everything and basically made him a, a really nice rock bouncer which I think is going to be a perfect rig for him to kind of take his interest in the hobby into the next level and so you can probably be looking forward to seeing this thing showing up in a couple of videos at some point in time so the reason why I freed this chassis up was because of uh, this thing right here, my new carbon fiber rig, um, which I absolutely just love this thing a lot. This really is quite capable. Um, I did upload a couple of videos here about a week and a half, two weeks ago of this truck in action. Um, most unfortunately, one of the things that I didn't include in those videos was the uh, two times that it rolled off of the rock right into the water and we're talking full submersion uh, and the motor that was in this thing didn't like the water. Um, it was my oldest upgraded motor probably going on about two years old from back when I got my first SEX24 Jeep Rubicon I think it was um, which I burned up that motor within about a month or so of getting that, that truck and so at any rate that was running the oldest RGT motor which is right here um, and then it kind of all happened about the same time that Holmes Hobbies released their new 44 turn and I think there's a couple other ones too but their new Torque Master 050 series stuff for the micros and so of course being the Holmes Hobbies fan that I am I decided to go ahead and get the 44 turn option and I just got that installed a couple nights ago um, and it's awesome I really gotta say it seems like it's got a considerable more amount of torque than what the older RGT motor has uh, and so I'm really looking forward to getting out and running this thing with the new motor installed as well uh, pin comp tires on here which I have now are running basically half foams in these these are some RC four wheel drive foams from I forget which these might be from Scramblers or something along those lines. I don't remember which ones they are now, but they are smaller than what comes stock and the pens. And so they definitely have considerably more compression, which is going to give them a little bit more of an advantage on, on stuff, you know, breakovers, rock edges and stuff like that. And so look forward to seeing this thing in video. It should be coming up sometime soon. Let me get that screwdriver a little bit more out of the way. Um, and then the other third truck that I've got here, like I said earlier, this is, uh, this is a Mini Z and this is the AMT, uh, 8283 Hilux, uh, body sitting on it. And I've had this body now for quite a while over the winter time. You might recall if you've been here since last winter, um, I uploaded about one or two videos of, of this body in action on the SCX 24 chassis. And so um, eventually I 
found uh, a Lindbergh uh, 120 scale model, which ended up working on the on the 124 chassis considerably better. So that's the light blue Hilux that you guys have been seeing in videos quite a bit here. Uh, and so that freed up this body, and I decided last week to go ahead and take the plunge and figure out how I was going to get this mounted onto this chassis. Um, and it worked out very, very well. I ended up doing magnetic uh, mount up front, and then it's friction held, of course, by the back part of the ESC. So um, it seems to be very solid. Now, granted, the wheelbase is a little bit longer than what the body itself is by about maybe, I don't know, one to two centimeters, but it's just got a little bit longer rake in the front, and that doesn't really bother me too much. Um, and it is definitely a very capable scale crawler. And I've done a little bit more detail work with, uh, well, I painted the bed, kind of give it that, uh, that black bed liner look. And then just a tiny bit of weathering, which you probably can't really make out on camera, but you should be able to see, I think, a little bit more of that detail in videos. So keep an eye out for this thing. I do plan on getting it out. In fact, if I run trucks this weekend, this one's probably going to be the star of a show here. So um, looking forward to seeing how this thing does. I put rock crushers on a set of plastic beadlock wheels. And I think these are probably going to work out really well. It's been doing great here on the indoor micro course. So I think that's probably about all I could say for those. Let's take a second to talk about this thing. Um, I just recently ordered a set of RC four-wheel drive Mickey Thompson Baja Pro X's and put on here. The videos that I've uploaded within the last week uh, have all had the original set of Injora tires on there. Those are scramblers, if I'm not mistaken. Mud swamp, mud something. Anyway, super swampers, that's what those are. And so um, those are a nice tire, there's no doubt about it, um, but they're kind of a budget-friendly tire, and so they're not made of the same compound as what these RC four-wheel drive tires are. So after taking it to a couple spots, I realized that I wasn't really getting the traction and performance that I was kind of expecting, like especially on wet rocks. And so... Um, kind of overextended myself a little bit money-wise and decided to make use of that 15% off uh, Memorial Day sale, Labor Day sale, whichever one that we just had. I think it was Memorial Day. That's what it was, Memorial Day. Uh, so 15% off, you know, and I got a set of tires that would have normally run like 70 some odd dollars. I think I ended up getting them sent here for about, I don't know, 60 and change plus shipping and all that good stuff. So. And I've only had just a chance to run these outside just a little bit um, in and around the house. I haven't taken this really anywhere special uh, to really see what they're going to do. But I can tell you already that what I've seen so far, um, these are definitely nice performing tires. They incredible traction, a nice soft compound. I do want to say though, these are the foams that actually come inside of these tires. And in the two and a half years that I've been into running RC trucks, these have got to be the stiffest foams that I've ever seen in a set of tires. And I probably have, I'm not kidding, probably at least like 30 sets of tires just sitting around, ones that are on the trucks already, ones that I have for spares and stuff like that. These are without a doubt the stiffest, firmest, basically unusable. So what I did was pulled the foams that I was using inside of the Super Swampers, and those were cut foams. I took about one to two millimeters of material off all the way around the outside and then cut the edges to give them a little bit more of a softer flex. And so uh, the advantage that actually gives these um, is huge. And I can tell already that these are going to be just absolutely great tires when they finally get out and, and really start to do some, you know, some hardcore testing out in the wild. So looking forward to seeing how this runs um, as well. You can't really see it in here. You can probably just see the wires hanging down. But, uh, and I will include a link in the description, if you are looking to enable four-wheel steering on your vehicles and you have not gone as far as to set up with steering knuckles and stuff like that, and you haven't purchased your servos or anything yet, and you're curious to how to make it work for you, um, I discovered just simply searching online that there is a module made by Bastens, B-A-S-T-E-N-S, N-S, there we go, Bastens. <laughs> um, and it cost 32 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, and the guy shipped out right away. I think I had the thing within about five days of placing my order. Um, but what that does is it gives you the ability to turn any two, three, or four channel radio 
into a four-wheel steer capable transmitter. And that was enormously beneficial. I had been using a uh, Dumbo RC four channel and the fourth channel was actually dedicated to left, right, or center. So I had full lock left, full lock right, and then full lock on center, so, or locked center, I should say. Um, but no proportional control over that at all. So what that does is it places itself in between both servos and in between your ESC, and you can now switch through all of the modes that would be normal steer, front wheel steer, four wheel steering. You get crab, and then you get rear wheel steer. And so that's done by, on the Dumbo four channel RC, you have a small toggle switch that's located right up where the, right above where your thumb position is on the grip that allows you to cycle through all four modes. Um, if you don't have a four channel and you're using just a two or a three channel, you can actually switch between those modes by moving the steering wheel back and forth. I think a sequence of like three times, full left, full right, full left, and that puts it into the next mode. So you can run again from four front wheel steer to four wheel steer, to crab, to having rear wheel, and then it cycles back through. Another thing too is that it also remembers whatever mode you were in previously uh, when you shut the RC off. So um, there is a small included uh, instruction sheet, some things that you need to run through to make sure everything is set up properly. But once it's set up, I can definitely assure you that it is everything that you would want it to be. I am very pleased that I spent the extra money to get that, that piece of equipment because it really kind of changes everything that this is now capable of doing. So I've been very, very happy with that so far. And as well, looking forward to getting it back out with the combination of the four wheel steering and these new tires on here. So um, this thing is just such a beast. I'm very glad that I kind of overextended myself financially and I'm glad that I found one used and I'm glad that it showed up. Uh, and I've been able to run it as much as what I have. I think the people that are seeing the videos uh, are definitely liking it, and I'm glad that you guys are into this thing because I'm definitely, I, I really like this thing a lot. Um, at some point, and I do want to say, uh, I will most likely be getting uh, an MOA rig. I really want to kind of branch out into that realm. There's really not much terrain around here that I can envision using an MOA rig on. It's going to be have to it's going to have to be something that I'm going to really need to search out and find uh, a place capable of being able to handle that kind of uh, uh, an RC because uh, from what I can see, they can just pretty much tackle just about anything you put in front of them. So it's kind of a matter of finding the right terrain to be able to run a rig like that on. So. This thing has kind of led me down that path of thinking that might be something I want to get into. So looking forward to kind of marching down that road at some point in time. So um, yeah, just a quick recap. Like I said, I just built this thing. I'll include a link in the description to where to get this chassis. This is a carbon fiber chassis, which I think I paid like $15.41, kind of nice. So that showed up and I built that, I got that all built up, which like I said, freed up the chassis uh, that I was once running uh, here for the last couple years. And I gave this to a friend of mine, and so now it's a very, very flexy, very capable uh, rock bouncer rig for him. And then also, too, uh, I threw the AMT 125 scale body onto this Mini Z 128 scale chassis. And so I'm looking forward to getting this out and running it as well. Um, I hope you guys like the new Moab Motorsports. Uh, that's actually kind of a plug for Trail Meter. If you guys are not subscribed to Trail Mater's channel. Stop what you're doing and go subscribe and just watch all of his videos. It's by far my, honestly, probably my favorite channel on YouTube running right now. Uh, I think he's got such a good crew and I love the fact that they take you along for all the recoveries. There's a whole ton of real live rock crawling that goes on throughout pretty much every video. He's even been doing some ones recently where he takes you along with some of his outings that have no recoveries uh, involved in them. They just head out and do a bunch of rock crawling. So they're big Jeep fans. So I have a little bit of a surprise coming. It's supposed to be here within the next couple days. And when that gets here, I'm actually going to do uh, kind of a tribute build basically, uh, basically towards for trail meter, um, not for him specifically, but it's going to be kind of a tribute to that channel. And, and like I said, it's, it's one of my favorite RC channels or not even RC. What am I trying to say? It's one of my favorite YouTube channels on YouTube running right now. Um, I haven't found something that's been quite as entertaining 
uh, in, in a while. So it's very nice to, to have that kind of content to sort of click on every couple of days. And he does upload maybe anywhere from three to five videos a week, just depending, I think, on how busy they are. Um, but you probably, if you're not aware, they already do, uh, they do a, a ton of uh, rescue recovery type stuff out in Moab, Utah. And so you get to see firsthand what it's like cruising through some of that terrain. And then they do just, uh, just some really cool repairs and stuff like that. They do a lot of field repairs. They do a lot of modifications of their own vehicles in a shop and stuff like that. And like I said, it's a good crew. Uh, and it's, it, they seem really non-pretentious types. And they're just happy to have you along for the ride. So give them a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, head on over to Trail Mater. And uh, I don't think you'd be dissatisfied if you do. So I think that's probably going to just about wrap it up for this video segment. I just wanted to do a short little thank you uh, to, uh, actually, hold on a second, before we go anywhere, big subscriber run here within the last couple of weeks. Um, right before I broke 900, it seemed like things were kind of hovering around the 900 range. It was like plus one or plus, plus or minus one or two over the 900. Uh, and as soon as it broke 900, it seems like within about the last week and a half, things have really taken off. Um, I'm currently sitting at 935, so thank you very much to all the new subscribers that have signed on. And uh, that really means a lot. And so it really seems like 1,000 actually isn't quite so far out of reach now. I'm 65 subs away from that, reaching that point, which is great. Uh, I guess upon that, then why don't we go ahead and call this a video. Thank you very much for being here. Hopefully you get to get out and run your, some of your own trucks. Please feel free to like, comment. I always love reading through your comments. Definitely one of the biggest parts of having this channel is interacting with each and every one of you whenever you do comment. I do appreciate all of what you have to say. And, uh, and thanks, for, just thanks, thanks for being here. So take it easy out there, and I will see you on the next one. All right, peace.